Coming up on Mountain News this morning, one woman is behind bars in Knox County, now facing charges in the disappearance of a Knox County teen. And yesterday marked the ninth anniversary of Roy and Wanda Campbell's murder in Perry County, and the family says answers are hard to come by in this cold case. Plus, with Thanksgiving coming up tomorrow, troopers with Kentucky State Police Post 13 are working on giving back. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. The time is 632 on November 27th. I'm Madison Pergram. And I'm Will Puckett. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News this morning on this Wednesday. Wednesday before Thanksgiving and I woke up this morning. It was raining. It's mm -hmm. kind of slowed down now, but kind it's of a dreary a, day. Yeah, a little bit dreary. gross start to the day, but Brandon says that there is good news on the horizon. Speaking so, of Brandon, let's yes. go to Brandon. Brandon, what a we're going to see some hope by the end of the day. Oh yeah, I think it'll be a much brighter end of this tunnel as we get deeper into the afternoon. But this morning, dreary conditions will continue for a while and then the skies clear out quickly by the afternoon. My pinpoint Doppler radar, the heaviest bands of rain have moved out. A few scattered showers left over the cold front. You see the line of rain near Cincinnati and Louisville. That's the edge of it. So once that moves through, we'll start to see again a little bit of relief there. Some scattered showers picking up down toward parts of southern Kentucky. So be careful this morning. 60 in Monticello, 57 Lexington, 58 in Irvin, 55 London and Somerset. Temperatures are actually going up in front of the front. 40s though in Middlesbrough, Harlan and Wise this morning. So a little bit cool still down that way. Winds cranking there at the sustained speeds of 10 to 15 miles per hour across parts of southern Kentucky. Picking up in the eastern counties too. Wise there at 10 across the state. You're seeing winds getting close to 30 miles per hour sustained there in Owensboro and some pretty good gusts as well. Your 12 hour planner we are going to see some gusty showers for a little while and then those clear out cooler conditions though after spiking around 61 this morning for your daytime high. I'll talk about the rest of the forecast and the forecast ahead here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Brandon. Well, a woman now faces charges in the disappearance of a Knox County teen. You probably saw Jacob's Boyd picture plastered all over social media this past weekend. This, however, is Darlene Elliott. She is the woman deputies arrested after they say they found the 14 year old at her home. WYMT's Hannah Reynolds breaks down what led deputies to charging Elliott with kidnapping. A concerned phone call set police on a search Saturday. Everything we gathered that he was a, a good young man and uh, this was kind of out of character for him. And so we, you know, obviously very concerned. Because 14 year old Jacob Boyd went missing. He was supposed to be walking from his home here to Central Elementary School to play basketball. The distance between the two less than one mile. But it was more than 25 minutes away where the search ended at this home on Skinner Lane in Corbin. Come to find out after we'd received a tip, uh, he had uh, had a girlfriend that stayed at that residence. Knox County Sheriff say they found him in the basement. The big question though, how did he get there? The investigation led them to the homeowner. We have very good reason to believe that she picked him up in the Boone High community and transported him to that residence in Corbin. They charged Darlene Elliott with kidnapping. We asked her to talk to explain what happened, but she declined. In Knox County, Hannah Reynolds, WYMT Mountain News. Now social services was contacted and will be determining what recommendations they suggest for Boyd. One person received serious injuries in a Knox County crash yesterday morning. Sheriff's deputies tell us two Jeeps were traveling on opposite directions on Highway 225 when they collided. One person was flown from Barberville ARH to UK Hospital. The driver of the other Jeep suffered only minor injuries. Deputies are trying to determine what led to the crash. And two people are behind bars after police found 10 marijuana plants being grown in a Knox County home. Several possible drug activity complaints in the Bryant store area of Knox County led officers to do a knock and talk on Four Mile Hollow Road. At Denny King's home, they found Brittany Cox, who had a bench warrant. Police smelled marijuana coming from inside where they found 10 plants being grown. Police then saw digital scales, methamphetamine and syringes as well. Marijuana was more out of the ordinary than anything else. Really don't run across a lot of marijuana anymore. It's mainly methamphetamines or heroin or your more bigger drugs now. Marijuana seems like it's kind of becoming a thing of the past now. King was charged with drug trafficking, drug paraphernalia, and cultivating marijuana. Over in Laurel County, a man is in jail after deputies say he threatened to burn down a house. 
Deputies say 53-year-old Ricky Arthur was armed with several weapons and was threatening to have a shootout with law enforcement. When deputies arrived, a female victim said Arthur had left and deputies found him in a wooded area behind a nearby barn. He's charged with assault, terroristic threatening and disorderly conduct, among other charges. He's being held in the Laurel County Correctional Center. And yesterday marked nine years since Wanda and Roy Campbell were shot and killed in their Perry County home. Though time has passed, the burden still remains for many of their friends and family. But the pain has not eased for Wanda's daughter, Shirley Justin, who still continues to pray for answers nine years later. I, I'll never totally lose my hope. Um, I, I do get pretty down sometimes and get close to it. But, you know, there's something in me that says no no there's still hope there's still hope Shirley ask if anyone has the smallest amount of information about this double murder to please contact Kentucky State Police post 13 at 606 435 6069 Two University of Louisville students are shaken up after an accidental shooting at their on-campus apartment complex the bullet came into their apartment from the unit below Thankfully, no one was hurt. University's dean says the suspect, who is a student, was cleaning his gun when a round went off. That gun has since been removed from him, and he's since been removed from campus housing and is facing discipline, which could be expulsion. And police in eastern Kentucky have recovered a truck reported stolen out of Louisville. One person is now charged in the case. Broadhead police say they received a call that a man was in a place where he was not supposed to be. Police found the stolen truck without a license plate and arrested Matthew Blevins. They say he also had drugs with him and Blevins is charged with car theft and drug possession. Well, with Thanksgiving tomorrow, troopers with Kentucky State Police Post 13 are working to give back. Their fourth year, for their fourth year, they have teamed up with Food City and Whitesburg to put together boxes to take to schools in four of their five counties. The meals are about $40 a piece and will help bring food to families who may otherwise not have a Thanksgiving dinner. It's special holidays are a special time, so it's just a very fulfilling and just uh, just a positive time for us all. In their fifth county, they team up with the community outreach program to get food to those families in need. And Sunny's Barbecue has restaurants all across many southern states, and they are giving away $10,000 to a nonprofit organization. One of the finalists for the money is with love from Harlan. Over the past two years, they have helped countless people in need. WYMT's Emily Bennett talked to with love from Harlan about the impact they could make with this money. An organization that jumps into action whenever they are needed. It was kind of overwhelming because there were so many people affected and, you know, so many people that needed help and we just couldn't do it all. This summer, with love from Harlan, was once again thrown into the spotlight, helping the Black Jewel miners while they were blockading the railroad tracks. I still have people message the page that say, hey, your name has come up a lot during the Black Jewel thing. And, uh, an article and we want to know more about your organization. Receiving national recognition. We got probably another 500 likes or more just from all that went on with Black Jewel. And now they are back in the spotlight as one of the five finalists for Sunny's Barbecue's Spirit of Barbecue Giving Tuesday edition. It's totally crazy. I mean, I, we're so small. We think we're small. We're real small. Um, but we, we try to do big work. Voting opened on Monday, and they already have more than 3,000 votes. After an hour, we had 500 likes. The winner receives $10,000, and Leslie Bledsoe already has her eye on the money. It's going to be ours. We're going to claim that, and uh, we're just going to put it back into the community, wherever it's needed most. Just wanting to help those who need it most. In Harlan, Emily Bennett, WYMT Mountain News. Now to vote, you can go to Sunny Barbecue's Facebook page and like the photo of your choice. We also have a link on our website at WYMT.com. Students, faculty, and staff at Betsy Lane High School hosted their second annual Turkey Bowl yesterday. Yes, they bowled with actual turkeys and for a good cause. Students participated in a food drive the week before, bringing in enough food to feed more than 50 families of students. The turnout this year doubled the amount of food from last year. When we told the kids that last year we had 20 dinners and we wanted to do at least double, 
they just, they came to the call. They always come to the call and it doesn't matter what we ask of them, they do it. The principal of Betsy Lane High School says he hopes next year's turnout is even bigger, feeding even more families for Thanksgiving. Awesome event over there at Betsy Lane. Been over there to visit a few times. Great schools, great schools across the mountains doing great things right now across the area. Right now we're seeing the rain coming down, but it started to slack off a little bit, just a little bit here. But watch out here on the satellite back toward Louisville. Watch the clearing line already starting to form with the clouds. So we're going to continue to see that a couple spots still seeing some showers this morning that will continue for a while longer outside WYMT. We are quiet for the moment. Some more rain possible temperatures going up in those western counties and we'll continue to see that trend move eastward as we head through time today. We'll spike temperatures in the low 60s, maybe even upper 50s for some spots early and then we'll start to fall behind the cold front. The wind will continue all day long. Wind advisory continues for the entire region until seven tonight. Guys. Thank you, Brandon, and thank you for joining us on Mountain News this morning. Coming up, we'll have a pet in our studio that's looking for a good home.